Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. In this video, we will be solving lead code 864, shortest path to get all keys. This problem is not actually a tricky problem, but this problem is something that requires step by step approach. And there are multiple steps that is involved in this problem. But if you understand or break down this problem to step by step, the solution is actually quite easy to this problem. But what is the prerequisite to this problem? The prerequisite is that you should already be knowing the breadth force search algorithm. If you don't know the BFS algorithm, I have mentioned a link in the description. Please first go through the BFS algorithm only attempt then attempt this problem. Then only it will make sense. Okay, so let's first understand the problem statement. Once you have understood the problem statement, half of the solution is solved. So in this problem statement, first we are given a starting point that is indicated by at this at indicates the starting point where the person is and the small alphabets that is a and b indicates the position of the keys that are present in this given grid this a and this b are different keys that is in this example there is one blue key and there is one orange key that is indicated by a and b then we all also have locks in this problem that are indicated by the capital letter a and b so the thing is the small letter indicate keys and the capital letter indicates the locks so what are the problem constraints that we have the problem constraints that we have is the first thing is you can travel in only four direction or you can travel in all the four direction say for example we have the person here he can travel in all the four direction so that is the first constraint what is the second constraint you cannot travel through a wall the walls are indicated by hash and once you hit a wall you cannot travel through wall so that is the second constraint that we have what is the third constraint we have the third constraint is you cannot go through a lock without having the key for example say you add this orange lock instead of here we add this orange lock here so then we would never be able to travel why because we cannot travel through a lock without having the corresponding key so and finally we are given the number of keys will be maximum number of keys is six so these are the four problem constraints that we have and what is the solution that we have to find we have to find the minimum number of steps that you have to take from the starting point to collect all the keys in the first example it is equal to six it is equal to 8. To get the first key, we will have to travel 2 steps and from these 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it will be 8. So the first example, we require at least 8 steps to get all the keys. Similarly, if you look here, this example actually explains the problem very thoroughly. The thing is, you cannot travel through this lock and go collect this key. The idea is you cannot go through this lock. Why we don't have the orange key? So the only path we will be able to take in this example is we have to go through all the other path. So what do we have to do? We have to go through this path, then get the key and stop. The key idea here is you need not open all the locks, but you just have to get the keys. So answer for this will be to get the first key, you will be requiring three steps. And from then again there, you will be just requiring six steps. That is, you need not open the law. So I hope you understood the problem statement. Now let's dive into the solution. Before diving into solution, let me explain BFS in a very brief manner. In BFS, what we had is, we will visit all the neighbors first. And then we also have a track of visited neighbors. How is it tracked? It is tracked with a Boolean array, right? say we had this array we kept a track of everything whether i have visited this or not visited this so if i have already visited this we were not allowed to visit in the bfs algorithm right so this is the bfs algorithm but will it be sufficient for our problem let's look into it let's let me take another example let me take this example right can we take this path that is the person will travel this and can he go like this no, right. He cannot go like this. Why? Because this we have a lock and we cannot travel through a lock without having the key. So we cannot take this path and find the 
B key. So the idea is first we have to go to the A key and then only we can come back or we can take this path also but we don't have the B, B key. So the only option here is we go to A key then come back again and then go back. But if you look here this cell is being revisited right. So instead of just having a boolean value for this visited or not visited we also need to have am I visiting this cell with the keys or without the keys. Let me explain this again. The first time we came to this cell, we came empty handed. We did not have any key with us. So if you are coming again to this cell without any keys, it doesn't make any sense. But if you are coming to this cell again with one more key or any other key, then it makes sense. Right? Why? Because we now have the key and it opens up a new option. Right? Similarly, you can come to this point again if you have another key. That is you have both A and B key, then you can come to this cell again, right? So let me explain this. First position was 0 and 0 and we did not have any keys. What is the second position that we had? The second position was 1 comma 0 but we now have no keys again in our hand. Then again what was the other option that we had? That was 0 comma 1. Again we did not have any keys. The next option if you look here, the position is 2 comma 0 but we do get a key with us. That is key A. Now again we will be having three options but one of them is 0, 1 comma 0 which we have already visited if you look here. 1 comma 0 is already visited but the thing is we have now got a key. So we can actually visit this again. This and this are very different. So instead of just having a boolean array, what we should have is we can have a hash set and this string, what we will be having is a hash set of string and what does the string contain? The first part will be the key part which will indicate which all keys we have. How do we come about this? I will explain in the next part but the first part will have the number of keys then we will leave a space in between then the position i then again a space and we will have the position j for example let's right we have a b key and we will leave a space and the position is 0 comma 1 so this will be our string and this will be added to our hash set so once this is added to the hash set this indicate we have already visited this position this cell with this key configuration so don't come here again so that is the key idea that we will be having but can we just use the key configuration that is one idea is we can just keep all the key configuration that is we will keep this key configuration but that would be a bad idea because every step we have to use a string and append the string and also we have to maintain this in the same order but that will be actually quite complicated. What is the next idea? The next idea is actually a very beautiful idea. This can be used in many other problems also. So please do listen to this very carefully. Now we can use the binary representation of a number. How we can use? 0 indicating we don't have this key and 1 indicating we have this key. 0 indicates no key and one indicates yes we have the key and what does this indicate this indicates a b c then g then e and then f the good thing here is in the problem we are given that the maximum number of keys is only six so this will be our representation and what we can do is once we have found a key suppose we found the key c what we will do is we will just update from this C, we will just update. What will this number be? This will be this will be 1, 2, 4. So this number will be 4. So what does the number 4 indicate? 4 indicates that we have the key C. Suppose we found a key 1 now. Key A now. This will be updated to 1, 0, 1 and all the remainings will be 0. This number indicates 5. So just by seeing this number, we are able to identify we already have a and C key. Let me give you another example. Say let's pick up a random number uh, like 7. What does 7 indicate? How can 7 be represented? 7 is represented as 111 and all the remainings will be 0. So this indicates that we have A, B, C, 
B and A key. We have all the three keys. So just this number indicates. So the idea is instead of storing in the format of a string, what we do is we store in the format of a number just by converting using mass. And this will range from 0 to 64. That is 2 to the power of 6. Why? Because that is the maximum number of keys that we will be having. So in a state, what is the particular state of a cell? We will be having one that is keys configuration which is a number from 0 to 64 indicating which all keys we have then we will be requiring i and we will be requiring j so we will have a new class this may seem like complicated why are we even having a new class cannot we store this in an array yes we can store this in a array also but we would prefer storing it in the format of a new object that is state which will indicate the key configuration and it will indicate the position i and j so here if you look we require only three things here that is one is modified breadth for search algorithm and the concept of mask and the final state if you have understood all the three things then the problem becomes very easy in the next step it is a normal breadth for search algorithm but a slightly modified approach that we have here so if you have understood all the steps let's solve the problem and find the step by step approach the first thing is we'll find the number of keys why this is important because it is also given that we will not have c key without having the a key so if you just have two keys instead of the number ranging from 0 to 64 this number will get reduced to a very short number that is you just require these two so the number can be just 0 and 1. So the second thing we'll be doing is we have to find the starting position. In this problem, in both the example, the starting position was 0, 0. But this is not always the case. The starting position can be anywhere. So we, will, we have to find the starting position also. These are the first two steps that we'll be doing. We'll be using a for loop and we will iterate over all of the cells and we'll be finding both of them. The next thing is we have to define a st state class which will be having the configuration of keys and int i and int j. Now just like a normal breadth for search algorithm we will be starting with a queue and we will add the initial state. Now this state actually makes sense. How does it make sense? 0 indicates that we don't have any keys and i indicates the initial position of the person that we have. Then while the queue is not empty, we will do the breadth for search algorithm. We have four options. One is we can travel in all the four direction. If we hit a wall, then we will be stopping. We won't do any iteration further on that. We take no action. If we hit a wall, we will continue with the next loop and we will not do any operation. But if we have a key, what we will do is we will update the key configuration. That is, for example, if you have found the C key, this will change to 100. Zero, zero. So that is the idea of masking that we'll be doing as soon as we find a key. Then, however, if we have found a lock, the key idea is we will check this configuration. For example, you found D, right? Capital D, you found this lock. But say you don't, you have this number, which is equal to 2. Do you think, uh, we have the key d no right so if we don't have we just have to stop there why because we cannot continue further on the path that is the idea so we'll be checking the key configuration and we if we don't have the key configuration we will be stopping there then after we have visited the cell and we will be visiting the next cell and we will be adding it back to the queue so this is the idea and finally if we have all the keys with us this number what it will become is 63 once we have hit 63 we'll be stopping there there is no need to go to the next cell that is the idea here and we'll be returning the number of steps if we don't achieve this 63 or where all the cells are one or if we just have two keys it is sufficient that we hit the number three once we have found all the keys we'll be stopping there and we'll be returning the number of steps i can understand this problem is a very tedious problem which requires a step by step approach this problem might be overwhelming but these require only three new things that we need to find if you have found this problem very difficult do consider going through these problems 
these are easy level problems and then the difficulty increases but we have these problems are using the same pattern or bfs to solve this problem if you have any difficulty please do join the telegram link that i have mentioned in the description you can ask me questions there and we will also be discussing the description and the solution to all this problem the telegram link i have mentioned in the description let's dive into the code without further ado defining here is a state which indicates the key configuration and the initial position and here if you look here we are finding the number of keys and the total and the starting point for example if we have five keys this total keys indicates we have five keys and the starting position we are finding it out the next thing is we are adding the state what does this state indicates is we don't have any key and this x comma y is our starting position say it is 0 comma 0 we are saying that we don't have any keys and we are at the starting position 0 comma 0 then we are creating a queue with the particular state and we are adding that to the queue now if you look here we also have a hash set indicating the visited we are adding this to the hash set and what does this indicates is we have already visited the position 0 comma 0 with the key configuration 0 so we will not be again coming to this cell without having any keys but if this number is 5 can you come to this yes if the number is 5 again we can come to this so that is what this is indicating then we will iterate through the queue if we don't have any uh, keys we will be stopping uh, if we don't have any elements in the queue we will be stopping however if we have any cell in the queue what we will be doing here is we will travel in all the four direction and we will get into the option the first option is we'll encounter a wall once we have encountered a wall it doesn't make sense to continue further so what we'll be doing is we'll be going to the next loop then again if we encounter a key we'll be updating our key configuration what we are just doing here is we are updating that particular value say we found c key we are updating the third bit from the left to one that is what we are doing here that is the first thing if we have found a key then again if we have found a lock what we are doing here is we are trying to check the keys if we have that particular key or not for example we found d capital d we are checking if the bit at the fourth position is one or zero if it is equal to one we will be continuing if it is equal to zero we will just go to the next loop then again what is the next thing next condition is we should not ha have already visited the cell with that particular key configuration that is what we are checking here if we have not already visited this we can safely visit this and we can also add the configuration with the position to the queue and finally we are increasing the number of steps this is one tricky thing here what we are doing is instead of storing the number of steps like we did in the queue what we are just doing is we are iterating over all the elements in the queue at one step and finally updating the number of steps after each iteration and finally we will be returning steps if the current key configuration we have reached that is all of them are once if all of them are once we will be returning the number of steps if at all if it is not possible we will be returning minus one thank you for watching the video please do like share and subscribe